Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone um, who's uh, signed up to participate in uh, this virtual college exploration session presented by the University of St. Francis. Um, we will get started in just a second, just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. Um, you're going to use the Q&A button on your screen to, to uh, ask any questions for our presenters. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. So if you've got questions, we do encourage you to ask them. No question is stupid. Please do just type it in in the Q&A, and the panelists will answer that question. Um, this is just one of many different sessions that are happening. Um, started in the mid-September, mid going through the middle of October. So be sure to check out the full schedule at the IACAC website. And this presentation is also being recorded as all the sessions are. So you'll be able to see this in about a week if you wanna revisit it, um, or if you wanna sign up for any other sessions. Again, check out the IACAC website at IACAC.org and you'll have all that information there. So what I'd like to do now is turn it over to our presenters and we'll get started. All right. Hi, everybody. I hope you all are doing well. I'm just getting everything situated here. Make sure everyone gets the access. All right. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everybody. My name is Alex. I'm one of the undergraduate admissions counselors here at the University of St. Francis. Uh, along with me today, I have Crystal and Nikki. Uh, they are both also admissions counselors here. Uh, I want to take the time right now to first thank you for taking the time out of your day to come going to get to know a little bit about St. Francis. But first, I want you to go ahead and close your eyes at your computer right now. And I want you to think of what's the biggest fear that you have about going to college. Okay, and that can be whether you're a first gen student, you don't know how you're gonna be able to afford it. Uh, you don't, you don't wanna live, you wanna you know, move away. You've never been so far away from your family before. Whatever that fear is, I want you to think about that. Okay. And I want you to understand as we go through the presentation today, right, that how St. Francis is going to be able to help you overcome that. Okay. We're going to be there for you every step of that way. All right. So let's kind of dive a little bit into the history of who we are. So St. Francis was founded in 1865, right? At least the, the congregation, which is Mother Alfred Mose. A quick little piece of kind of unique information. Mother Alfred Mose, if you've ever heard of the Mayo Clinic, which is the medical facility in Minnesota, they were actually founded by uh, Mother Alfred Mose and the sisters with the Mayo brothers. So then what happened, Mother Alfred Mose decided, you know, I need to go down to Joliet. And she saw there was a need here in the Joliet community uh, that women needed an education. So in 1920, she founded St. Francis as a junior college. And then in 1925, we became a full-fledged you know, you know, university, a full year. Biggest thing is if you look here from 1925 to 1971, so that's 46 years, we were all an all women's school, right? And that still kind of led today on what we do, right? 60% of our student population are women, right? So again, it, that's something that we really strive for and we try to bring in that diversity part to it too, okay? So we have four core pillars here at the University of St. Francis, compassion, service, respect, integrity. As you come on campus, I, know I highly recommend you to come in and visit St. Francis. Come walk the halls, see, see what campus is like, see the students, you know, meet some professors. As you walk around, you're gonna see how St. Francis embodies these four core pillars because that's something we want you to do because you're not just getting a degree in accounting, you're getting a liberal arts degree. We're getting you ready for the world. Right, we're getting ready for you. How do you meet with somebody? So if there are those of you that want to do accounting, a nurse, a doctor, right, we want to be able to prepare you to get to, to take that person out of that situation, right? Or if you're trying to close a deal, you want to be able to talk about music, right? You want to talk about, you know, what's going on 
out in politics. You want to be involved. So this way you can able to seal your deal, get your patient out of that current situation. And that's what we do day in and day out at St. Francis. There are, we have four different locations where I'm presenting from right now. Uh, this is Mother House and it's on our main campus. This is what I like to say is the heartbeat of the university, right? This is where all of your you know, education, your business classes, your gen eds, or predominantly you're gonna be housed in main campus. This is where you're gonna see most of your 1700 students on campus, right? Now, if you start adding students like myself and Crystal who are a graduate program, right? Then you're gonna see all of our graduate level and then our doctoral candidates as well, okay? So that's what we'll add in. So in total, we're looking at about 4,200 students in total, right? That's where you'll see most of us. We'll be on main campus. Then you move in if you're in political science, criminal justice, recreation, sports management, art and design, you're gonna be in our downtown Joliet campus. Pretty cool thing in here for my entrepreneurs out there, right? Thinking about starting your own company. In here, what's, what we have is uh, St. Francis's Shark Tank. Right? We have you talk to your local investors about getting yourself a job or starting your own company. Give you a quick example. I had a friend of mine when he graduated, he wanted to create his own soccer club. When he created his soccer club, he went to that shark tank and he pitched it. The investors loved it. He's now successfully ran his company for the last three years. Okay. For my nurses, right? You will then go up the road about five, 10 minutes as if you were heading towards the highway. Okay. You get onto our uh, St. Clair campus, and that's essentially starting sophomore year, second semester. You will, that's essentially going to, this will be your new home, right? That's where your sim labs will be at. That's where all the nursing classes will uh, take over, okay? Then from there, you'll go off into clinicals. If you're thinking about being a PA, right, or a physician assistant, we do have a satellite campus out in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And that's somewhere where you can go and get out of it and try to escape the Chicago cold air after you graduate from St. Francis, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn it over now. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and talk about what we do here at St. Francis. Yeah, so what we do kind of ties into the fun process of figuring out what major you would like to choose whenever you're studying throughout your college journey. So here at the University of St. Francis, let's go with the clicker. Oh no, is it working? There we go. We have 43 undergraduate programs here at St. Francis, 14 graduate programs and two doctoral degrees. For all of these programs, they're encompassed between four different colleges. The first one is the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, a couple of examples of these programs are biology, uh, arts and, uh, the art and design program, history, political science, biochemistry, um, programs like that. The next one is the College of Business and Health, and Health Administration. So if you're looking into accounting, marketing, management, healthcare management, you'd fall under that, uh, under that college. The next one is the College of Education. So for anybody looking to be a teacher, whether it's at the elementary, middle, secondary, or special education level, um, those would all be encompassed under the College of Education. And then last but not least is nursing. Um, so the College of Nursing encompasses all of the students that are looking to complete their BSN, which is their Bachelor's of Nursing program, um, and then continuing on into uh, potentially further degrees in nursing. Um, the top five programs that we uh, have here at St. Francis are biology, business, nursing, and education. Um, surprisingly, the last one, uh, the, the fifth one that we have is undecided or undeclared. Um, I know sometimes it's kind of nerve wracking trying to ch uh, choose a major with graduation and everything going on. Um, you don't really have to declare a major until the middle to end of your sophomore year. So if you're undecided, you're kind of between two majors or you have no idea which major you want to choose, perfectly fine. Again, our fifth most popular major is undecided. So there's plenty of time between your uh, the start of your freshman year and the middle of your sophomore year to go ahead and uh, explore all the different options for majors and seeing which one works best for you. 
One thing we encourage students to do um, as part of their college journey is get involved outside of the classroom. Um, so yes, coming into school, you're looking to get your degree, but college is much more than just going to class, sitting in a lecture and writing a research paper. Um, there's a lot that you can do outside to still get involved and still be in a very uh, integral part of the USF community. We do have 45 clubs on campuses, on our campus. Um, some of the clubs are based on their, uh, based on majors. So for example, history club will have our history, the history program will have a history club. Um, nursing has a student nurses association. So there are a good number of clubs that are based on academic programs. The cool thing is you don't have to join the club that your major has. You can join another club. Like let's say you're in nursing and you wanna be in the history club. Absolutely, go ahead and join. Um, you can be involved in as much as you want. Um, some clubs are high maintenance where they may have meetings every week. Some are low um, where maybe they have monthly meetings. Um, the cool thing is that if you're still kind of figuring out which club you want to go into, we have a student involvement fair every semester. So typically it's the first, uh, it's second or third week of every semester. It's kind of like a college fair, but with clubs. So they'll have a lot of tables out. You can talk to some of the people who are, at, who are in each club. You can see what the schedule looks like, what events they hold, and then see if there's anything that kind of catches your interest. Um, if you don't find a club that you like, you can always make your own. So let's say um, you really want a club on bird watching. We don't have a club on bird watching. Um, if you have four or five friends that want to make that club, you can come together, pitch an idea to the Student Government Association, and then instead of having 45, we'd have 46. Um, it's a really good item to have on your resume when you graduate, showing you know time management and making uh, being able to make your own club. So that's always really cool. Um, because there's always an option to find a niche that works best for you. A couple of other things that we really like to touch on for getting involved, um, undergraduate leadership development and internships. Most of our majors do require some sort of internship. Um, if you're education and maybe your student teaching, if you're nursing, it's going to be your clinicals. Um, some programs may just require that you have an internship to graduate. Um, those will always look great whenever you're completing your college career because they help give you more job experience before you even cross the stage. Um, so I would highly encourage that students get involved in internships um, as well as undergraduate research as well. Um, we do have an undergraduate summer grant. Um, so if students want to get involved in research projects over the summer, they can apply for this grant. And if you are able to receive it, then you can actually have the university pay for your research project over the summer, which is really, really cool because then it's another thing that you can add to your resume and say, yep, I did this in college too. I'm really marketable. Um, for example, if you want one in front of you, uh, Alex actually did this when he was a student. Um, he did the research project uh, regarding um, the Joliet um, unit during the Civil War. He actually went on a whole entire tour of the American South, visited all, all the places that this regiment went, and then they actually made a documentary that is now uh, currently at the Joliet Area Historical Museum. Um, so just an upfront example of some really cool things that you can do with that. Moving forward into athletics, um, if anybody watching this is a uh, student athlete and you're considering continuing to play while you're in college, we do have options for you to play here as well. We do have 23 athletic teams here that are in the NAIA athletic division for college athletics. Um, of those teams, um, some of them are very, uh, some of them have won a lot of national tournaments. Some of them are listed here, women's basketball, softball, cross country, bowling, indoor, indoor track and cross country. Um, so we do have a lot of really good teams on campus. If you are considering being a college athlete or a student athlete while you're in college, um, we actually have the opportunity for you to receive both academic and athletic scholarship at the same time. Essentially what you would do is if you're interested in being on a, on a, a sports team, well, you can get in contact with the coach. You can contact someone in the admissions office and you can say, hey, I'm interested in applying and I really want to be on the basketball team. Can you, get in con can you get me in contact with the coach? And from there, we can get you all their contact information and have you start the recruitment process as well as the application process. And we'll work with you throughout that entire thing um, to make sure that everything looks good in terms of athletic scholarship, um, academic scholarship, and to make sure everything works smoothly for you. And then we turn it over to Crystal. All right, 
right, uh, so hi there guys. Um, I'm going to talk just a little bit more about, you know, what makes USF a little bit unique, a little bit of its statistics that will kind of differentiate between maybe a different nursing program to our program, and just a little bit more about those facts and figures with, for you guys. Uh, so let's see if I can get the program moving as well. I don't think I can. Hold on one sec. Oh, and there we go. Okay, so like I mentioned, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, some percentages about the school. So whenever it comes down to kind of learning, you know, you did hear that it's 1,700 undergrad students, where you may also have up into like almost the 4,000 students on our campus. So, but, you know, what does that look like? How does that reflect into your classroom sizes? Uh, we are very, you know, proud of the fact that we are probably considered a little bit smaller institution, but with that being said, we do have smaller size classrooms. So I would say it's kind of comparable to maybe even your high school classroom where you might at the most see yourself with 25 students or so in your classroom. Uh, but as you progress typically throughout your time here at USF, depending on your major, you might find yourself with as little as 15 to maybe even eight students in your classroom. I think even Alex, uh, he had a student uh, classroom size or he was it being like 10 or less students. So it really depends on which classes you take where you can definitely have a little bit less students in there. So it's a lot more personal for you. So if you don't mind, you know, a teacher knowing who you are and your name and being able to keep tabs on you to make sure you succeed in your class, then, you know, this might be something for you. Uh, you definitely won't be just left behind, you know. You might be sitting in the back row, but they'll definitely still know who you are. Um, and a little bit more on here is that, you know, we all, all of our teachers here have a terminal degree. Um, there is no, like, student teacher. So essentially, you're always going to be taught by somebody who is still in that field or is continuing their education in that field. Uh, so it's never going to be necessarily somebody who maybe just, you know, is still studying but hasn't graduated in their undergrad or anything like that. They all have very much five to ten years more of experience in that field that you're doing, especially, you know, with history. You definitely want somebody who knows a lot about it. Um, you don't necessarily want somebody just, you know, straight out of, you know, school necessarily. Uh, but obviously, there's are opportunities for you to do that as well. You want to continue that on as a student here. Um, and that's where you kind of get that mentorship from them and continue that on if you were to become a good alumni from us or anything like that um, to kind of continue on. There we go, accreditations. Uh, so if a lot of you don't know what accreditations are, that's always a big thing to kind of know into what schools you're looking into. Um, a lot of times, you know, people may say, well, why does this matter? Um, does it really, you know, make a difference or not? Um, I always like to use the example of that, you know, for like my position or certain positions when I was out of, you know, universities, I was looking out uh, job listings and a lot of them say, you know, we need you to have a bachelor's from an accredited university. Um, so if you didn't have that accreditation, it might make it a little bit harder for you to find a specific job that you're looking for. So it's always kind of good to have this accreditation. But essentially what this means is that, you know, there is another uh, person, another group, another association who's vouching for our programs. They're basically saying, you do meet all the standards that you need. You are going to be a student that has all the things or materials needed uh, once you graduate from us to succeed in that field. Um, you know, you get that respectfulness uh, from us to make sure that we have every single standard met. And if you look at the uh, screen here, essentially, you know, we were opened in 1920. So, you know, from 1926 up until now, we've always been accredited. Uh, so we are, you know, an institution that continues to strive for that. And we might have added some along the way, as you can kind of note on the bottom with different accreditations throughout the years. Uh, but all our programs here are accredited and it's something that we definitely are proud of, uh, about. And if we do have a new program coming up or anything like that, we definitely try to make that program accredited as soon as possible as well. Um, and then just to continue on, outcomes. So this is usually, you know, the bigger uh, slide here. Students might want to ask, well, you know, I might get a degree, uh, but what kind of job outlook am I looking at? Or, you know, 
I got my degree, but do I have to take an assessment test or something to get licensed towards the end? Depending on your major, you will have to either take an assessment test or the licensure test to still be able to practice um, that specific area in the real world. So on the bottom, you'll see some of the 100% pass rates. Those are for the specific major. So if you're looking into education, um, you could still graduate with your bachelor's, but in order to still practice that, become a teacher and you know your area you want to be able to pass this ADTPA assessment. You know, we prepare each student to pass that. As you can see, we have a 100% pass rate the first time. So we definitely are putting specific, you know, regulations to make sure students are meeting um, their grades, their GPA is still where there needs to be in order to have a successful pass rate for you. Um, we definitely don't want you to graduate and not be able to practice what you majored in. Uh, and then the other 100% pass rate on there is for physician assistants. The kind of how we mentioned in the beginning, if you are looking to, you know, go into PA school at a remote campus, you definitely can't do that. Um, it is a separate application process for us but overall, uh, right now, all our students are getting 100% pass rate on that uh, certification exam in order to kind of, you know, be able to continue that um, into the real world, like I mentioned before. And then our big one, one of our top majors also, which is nursing and CLEX test. That is a really big one for us here. But it can always kind of change in between. Uh, but overall, we've always had between the 95 to 97% pass rate the first time and 100% pass rate the second time. Um, like I said, this is one of our top majors along with um, uh, education. So it's definitely something that we always want to you know, have up there uh, for all our students because they are very um, needy and important and, and very uh, strong programs to go into and difficult maybe kind of for you. So we want to make sure that all that effort that you put into the program at the end of that uh, four years with us here, you're able to successfully pass that test and be able to, you know, continue on um, in your interest in the real world. And then the 98%, just to kind of wrap up some of the uh, outcomes here is, you know, even if you were in any other education program, you know, social work, um, art and design, anything else that maybe we didn't mention out here that don't necessarily need an assessment or a licensure test at the end, you do have a 98% placement rate. So essentially what this means is that after six months with us here, sorry about the lights there, uh, but after six months with uh, being with us here, you will either have come back for a uh, master's level. Uh, maybe not necessarily with us, but in general, you've gone back to get that master's level, or you've actually gotten yourself a job in the field of your interest, or whether it's an entry level job or anything like that. But essentially, all of our students um, at that point have had something to kind of continue on um, regarding their interest, whether it's a master's level or an actual job in the field. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry, guys. I have one more slide. One more slide. So, uh, alumni network. So, this one, uh, essentially what alumni means, though, before I get started with that, is that you know, once you graduate from a school, you're an alumni for that school, you have the roots in that school. So, a lot of our, our admissions counselors here, they've all graduated from here. So, they're alumni. They're, you know, they're basically extra resources for you to kind of reach out to when you're a student here, you know, if you are interested in any specific, you know, majors, if we have somebody who's a history major, and they're actually going you know, to work in a museum or have connections with any outside outreach programs that are helping restore history, we'll help you to get in touch with them to see, hey, is there any volunteer options for us? Uh, how can the student continue on with you? This is how we kind of continue that on and have students have more internship opportunities as well. You know, if you're in business and you want to, you know, see how it might be to be, uh, you know, maybe mentored by a CEO or be mentored by somebody in a business that's kind of been, you know, been run for a while, pretty successful program. We definitely want you to be in touch with them to kind of learn the routes and uh, kind of just know what you're getting into. Because a lot of times you might be, you know, you might be set. You want to be a nurse. You want to help students, but then you realize, oh, maybe I don't want to do that. And the way to kind of help you figure that out is to kind of get through those internships, get you in touch with these mentors to kind of help you, guide you uh, to see what else you can do with your psychology degree or what else you can do with your art and design degree. So there's so many options you can usually do. There's never just one end um, 
one end result for one major. Uh, so we definitely want to keep you in touch with that. Um, the big program here that we have for students is the SAM program, which is a student alumni mentoring program. So that's one that we definitely strive. A lot of students usually get into that pretty early on. And like I said, a lot of it is to get you in touch about your future, what you can do with that degree, and you know, just make sure you're aware of you know your surroundings, and make sure you're aware of what you're investing in when you do come to USF. But overall, we have 49,000 uh, alumni networks, and that you know, that can open up to really as many students depending on you know. Each year, we get new students that graduate, we get new connections, so that's always ever changing. So it's not necessarily like the same ones so, uh, uh, each year per se, uh, per se, and then 50 states. So you know, that's all over the you know place. We do get a lot of students. You know that can be international that can be from california that can be just you know down the street so we definitely have a lot of students that we can get you connected with you know um, we do have some students that stay connected with international students so you know if you are looking at you know business but internationally then you definitely want to you know keep in touch with those you kind of you know be able to see maybe i can you know travel out there and you have that networking skills already so that way we don't have to necessarily struggle with that. And plus networking is a huge um, aspect of all these programs. Since in the, you know, once you're in the work field, networking, knowing your connections is a huge uh, thing for you to have. So we definitely want you to leave, you know, USF, but not just with the degree, but with connections, with, you know, relationships, friendships with other people in the field. So that way you're not necessarily looking at, you know, where do I turn to for a job or anything like that? This way you'll uh, be able to reach out to somebody and maybe not have a full-time job necessarily right off the bat, but you'll have an internship, you'll have a starting position uh, summer uh, other than just kind of being lost. Uh, but with that being said, that is my last slide there. So I'm gonna turn it over to Alex. All right, there's some great information that both Nikki and Crystal gave kind of talking about St. Francis, you know, what you can do, what you can major in, what happens once you graduate from St. Francis? So it kind of brings up to that question, what's your legacy going to be? What are you going to leave behind for your family here at St. Francis? But what also are you going to build on for your next family as well, for that future that you're going to have, right? So we want you to be able to kind of think about those things. But let's kind of talk about how you become a saint, right? So you got two options. One, you can go onto our website here down at the bottom, stfrancis.edu slash reply. Or you can go ahead and go through the common app. Right, we're on both of those. You'll go ahead and fill it out. Okay, then the next step, you would need to turn in your high school transcripts, right? And it can be as simple as taking your phone out, taking a picture of it, and then emailing it, texting it, whatever, put it in the mail, whatever you gotta do, you can send it to us and we'll take those, right? That's gonna be the next biggest part. Now, I know right now with everything going on, the big thing right now is going with test scores. Do you need it? Do you not need it? St. Francis has gone officially test optional. What that means is that you do not have to turn in your test score, okay? Your test score will not be involved with your admissions decision, right? So if I know for the most part, most schools are asking you to take it, still take it, right? Because it's a school requirement and see what your score is. If you like your score, you can give the option to go ahead, you know what, I'm gonna actually turn in my score, I'm gonna use my score for admissions purposes. But again, you do not have to turn one in and it will not be held against you for admissions purposes. Now, for my students that are taking AP classes, dual credit, those kind of things, turn those in because we'll be able to take those for college credit as well. Again, it's gonna help streamline and help get uh, you faster. I've seen students take 12 AP classes along with six dual credit courses. It can extend, it can shorten up your time at the university. Okay, so now you've done step one and step two, and now you've been accepted into the university, right? Now we're gonna go into financial aid. So October 1, you probably have already started, you started hearing at your schools about fill out your FAFSA or the alternative application. Go ahead and start filling those out, okay? Start filling those out. You can reach out to any one of us, talk to your admissions counselor, and ask them for help with the FAFSA or the alternative application. If you feel that you're not eligible for either one, talk to your admissions counselor, talk to any one of us, right? And we'll help you. We'll try to figure out what, what we can do. Are you eligible for a FAFSA? Are you not eligible for alternative application? That's fine. Let's sit down and we'll talk. We'll have you fill out another form right here 
on campus and from the university to help try to get you some financial aid. So now you've done step one, step two, and step three. Now it's time to commit. So that would be turning in your tuition and housing deposit, right? And then signing up for what we call our SOAR events or a student orientation and registration event. So now we're gonna get you oriented to the university. How's, it, how's my portal work online? How does that look, right? We're gonna teach you how to do that and get you your classes at, all together, okay? So now you've done one, two, three, and four. Now it's time to, you know, to, to be a saint, okay? I want to thank you for coming to this event tonight. All right. I want you to come visit and see everything that we talked about in person. Okay. Go ahead. And these are the different options that we have. If you're interested and you still want more information, go ahead and take out your phones, go ahead and scan this QR code. All right. And this way you can get in contact with any one of us. All right. One of us will reach out to you, kind of check in, see how you're doing. Okay. And come visit campus. Again, you can take a tour of main campus, take a tour of St. Clair. You know, we were trying to see if we can get you sit to sit in on a class, try to meet with a, uh, you know, a faculty member. We'll try to figure it out so you can have that experience so you can see what we were talking about. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this screen up. Go ahead and uh, throw your questions up in the chat. Or if you have anything at all, we'll go ahead and start answering those questions now. No questions, nothing. I think we, I think we answered it all. I think we did pretty good tonight. I don't know. No questions. Nikki, how was your time at St. Francis? Uh, I loved it. Honestly, it was the best time of my life. Uh, I wish I didn't come in as a transfer, honestly, because when I came in, I came in as a transfer. So I spent my first two years at a community college, uh, transferred in, and then I finished my last two years at St. Francis. And I had such a blast my first, my last two years in, in my degree. I wish I had come in sooner because so, I was like, dang, I missed out. <laughs> Could have come in and gotten four years of this. Um, so it was just really fun. I loved all of my professors. Um, you know, I really got to build some really cool relationships with my peers in terms of, you know, looking into lifelong friends. Uh, some of my best friends I've met when I was at St. Francis. Really, it's such a quality place to be. Um, even, you know, I liked it so much, I decided to continue my journey here with the St. Francis family and come in and help students who want to come in, in the future. Um, so there are still days where I wish I, I miss being a student because I was like, this was so much fun. Um, and just, you know, I was a history major, so I love being a part of all the buildings. I remember when I was a high school student touring the place, I was like, it looks like Harry Potter in here. I'm kind of sold. <laughs> Um, so I just loved being part of the historic looking campus and the fact that everyone was so nice um, because everywhere you walk on campus, everyone is saying hi, even if you don't know them, you don't know their name, you don't know what major they are, but you know, you know that they're a student. Um, you know, you know, you've seen them on campus. They're always saying hi, how you doing? Um, and everyone just genuinely cares. Um, and the one thing I really liked was that you really get a chance to kind of be like a big fish in a little pond. Because I know, like, for some schools, I really did not want a big school. Um, you know, you can be in a lecture hall with 300 people. Um, the farther up I got into my history program, the smaller the classes got. So for my senior thesis, it was myself, the teacher, and one other student. And that was it. So you really got the chance to just grow as a student and as a person. And I honestly don't know where I would be if I didn't come to St. Francis. So I, I loved it. Best time of my life. <laughs> And then I think, I think if you're really, if you're able to, if you want to talk about, you're really is another one of our admissions counselors. Uh, she's also an alum. She actually a recent alum. She actually graduated back in December. So she's actually probably got one of the freshest takes on what her USF experience was. Uh, you really, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, 
And if you want to talk about your experience here at St. Francis. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, so um, a little bit kind of like Nikki, I mean, I was a biology major um, with a concentration in uh, physical therapy or occupational therapy, but um, I was there throughout my four years. Um, so I came in as a freshman and I truly loved it. I really regret, one thing that I do regret is not being, um, not dorming on campus because um, I was there so often. I was there maybe till like five in the morning sometimes studying and stuff like that. Um, but I think it would have been better and everybody's talked really good things about the dormings. Um, but other than that, no, I, I truly loved it. I loved my anatomy labs. Um, I think Mother Alfred Mose and the Mayo Clinic really um, show in, in our biology department too or anything in the medical field. So, yeah. <laughs> Crystal, I know I know that uh, you're in the grad program, but you're still getting a chance to experience St. Francis on a, on a school level. How, how are you liking it from a student perspective? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the odd one out. I have not earned my badge and medal for the school yet. Um, but I mean, overall, when I first, you know, got hired on, I definitely, you know, agreed with Nikki that, you know, it was one of those places you got on campus. And, you know, we always have, you know, our uh, father, Terry, who is always walking around saying hi to everybody. And, you know, it's very welcoming environment. You definitely don't really, you know, go in a room and feel awkward or anything like that, like you're lost. Um, you know, it is, you know, a pretty, you know, I say pretty decent, you know, size campus. You know, you can, you can probably get lost a little bit. Uh, but, you know, everything is very outdoorsy. So you definitely have, you know, you're not just really feeling like you're just in the building. You walk out and there's the, the quad area. So you definitely have that outside space to kind of hang out with friends or anything like that. Um, you know, being in the grad program, it's, it is online. So I don't technically, you know, meet a lot of students in person. Um, but overall, everybody in the program and the advisors have been, you know, very helpful for me. Uh, so I do think that is good to reflect it to, you know, not only am I, you know, helping other students, but I can vouch uh, for, you know, the other advisors on the other side and, you know, uh, admissions counselors that they are still doing the same way as you continue on. So we definitely want to continue for your master's level here. Um, we definitely would still be in good hands. And, you know, and that's just coming from somebody who has already gone through the whole, you know, transfer process and the applying multiple times. Uh, so this definitely was a smooth uh, transition for me going from uh, undergraduate to a master's level uh, school. Good. That, that's pretty fun to hear when you, when the, the fact that you get so felt that same experience, even though you're on a, the graduate side, you still get to see the same thing that a traditional undergrad feels. It's awesome. Uh, Nikki, what kind of clubs were you involved with? Uh, so I was involved in the history club on campus. Um, and then I helped form a club called Late Night Crew. Um, so essentially the history club, um, again, it was history major. It was just kind of to build upon the uh, academic part of history club, like instead of actually lecturing about the Civil War in class, you would go to different local historical sites. We also went to um, a couple of history uh, conferences. So if you wrote a research paper, you could uh, enter it into a conference and then present it at one of the academic conferences. Um, and then my friends and I started a club called Late Night Crew. So Late Night Crew um, was kind of an alternative way just to get students involved on campus, um, you know, without having to go out to different areas of Joliet, kind of like uh, movie nights in and stuff like that, just to give students some opportunities to stay involved um, for those that were living on campus. So a lot of movie nights on the quad, um, looking into, you know, come to the Abbey Lounge and get free popcorn and stuff like that. Um, so those were the two that I was involved in on campus. Nice. Uriah, really, how about you? What kind of clubs are you involved with on campus? I don't know if she heard me. <laughs> yeah, I know we have like about like five more minutes left. I don't know if you want to just add on, Alex, a little bit about your experience. Yeah, so for me, my experience is a little unique. So right out of high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and enlist in the Marine Corps. So I left right away and enlisted in the Marine Corps for 
uh, in the reserve side for six years. So I went and I did the college and, and the military at the same time. But when I got to St. Francis, it was very different because I went, I was, the, I was the kind of student that woke up, went to class, went home. Woke up, went to class, went home. And then starting my sophomore year, that's when I really got involved on campus. I was a part of UVA, or Unidos Vamos a Cansar, which is our Latino club that's on campus, All right? So I got involved with them and they really helped shape me on my voice. They helped me find my identity on who I was. They didn't, they didn't see me as anybody else, right? They, they saw me as a Latino. That was for me very important because I was struggling at that time. Uh, then I got involved, I helped create a club called House which is essentially is more like a resource kind of group talking about, you know, where can we find some scholarships for students? Uh, that's when I really more focused in on my major because I was in political science. So I got, I got to know, you know, our Dr. Julie Victa. I got to know a lot of the history professors. Yeah. And for me, having those professors have my back and really motivate me, like, keep going, like, don't stop. What's your plan? What's your goal? Right. And then running into those people like the janitors that's on campus, running into Mama, if you get a chance to take a, a tour of campus and meeting Mama, you will understand why she is called that. She's one of the cafeteria ladies, but having somebody like her, right? And then run, like motivating you and always just being there for you, it, uh, it was really key in keeping me going, right? And then run, of course, getting to know the, the president. The, you know, when the president gets to know you by name, you know, for some people think that's not a good thing, but here at St. Francis, he wants to know every one of his students to make sure that they graduate. So for me, again, going through my whole experience, that was key, knowing that I had different people in my corner rooting for me to make sure I get to graduation. Uh, Nikki's club, kind of a nice little fun tie-in. History club, myself and a good friend of mine who filmed that documentary about the uh, uh, about the Civil War Regiment from Joliet, we actually decided one night, you know what, hey, let's start a club, let's start a history club, why not? And we, this is the kind, this is how much fun you can have with this. Uh, we went, when we did our presentation to our Student Government Association, in our constitution, it's written in there that Nicholas Cage is an honorary member, right? Uh, we, we had fun with it. We, we said different things in our constitution, and now we have a club, and we get to see great you know, great students taking advantage of it, like Nikki, you know, using it to one, just build a network, but two, show how much history can be fun, right? So for me, kind of seeing that is a kind of a nice full circle moment to have that whole experience. And I recommend anybody, you know, come visit and see campus for yourself so you can see what it's like. Come talk to one of us. Again, you'll never know. You come on campus, you might run into you know, the history professor, you might run into the biology professor, or you might even run into the president, right, and get to build and already start having that conversation with somebody. So that, again, from my experience, is a little different. You know, I kind of started it a little different, but in the end, I still had the same kind of experience that both Urelli, Nikki, and Crystal have, have had. So it looks like we have about like two, three minutes left. I know nobody uh, put any questions on there, but at least on my side, I just want to, you know, say also thank you for tuning in. Uh, I know I was probably cutting into your, you know, dinner time or something like that. Maybe just trying to hurry up and get, you know, to that meal. Uh, but, you know, thank you so much for tuning in and taking some time to meet us. Uh, like I said, we have the QR code there, so if you did by any chance fill that out, uh, that way we can definitely keep the conversation going even after today. Yeah, thank you again for joining in. Um, you know, again, we know it's probably cutting into your evening time, um, but we really appreciate you just taking a little bit of time out of your day just to sit in with us, even if we don't, you know, have any conversation, you know, just sitting in with us and just discussing um, USF, a place that we're all so passionate about. Um, we know that this is a, a tough time, you know, with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, and it's probably really impacted your senior year and your junior year. If you have any questions about how to navigate the college search process, because this is a very 
change is changing by the day with everything going on. Um, so if you ever have any questions on how to na navigate the college process, if you're a senior filing FAFSA and you have questions about how do I file the FAFSA, how do I financial aid, what does this mean, you could always reach out to us. You know, we're always available for you, um, you know, and we work closely with this all the time. So if you have any questions about how do I navigate the admissions process, how do I know what to do for this, um, how do I know what this means on financial aid, what does this mean, how do I pay for school, um, we're absolutely willing to sit down and talk with you. So if you ever have any of those questions, um, feel free to go ahead and fill out that QR code. I don't know if we can put our contact information in the Q&A, um, but we can certainly get that information out to you so we can get in contact and just talk about everything and make sure you're okay with navigating the college process. Thanks so much. Um, I want to thank the, the entire staff that presented for USF. It's a great admission staff. You guys did a great job. Um, just a few things we're going to go over for our participants. Just a few reminders. Um, number one, as I said before, uh, this, there's going to be, when you log off, uh, there'll be a quick four-question survey that'll pop up. Um, please uh, do us a favor and fill that out. It's the way we can improve these programs for you and it won't take you very long to do. And as we mentioned, um, this is just one of many sessions that's being hosted. They are all being recorded and you will be able to, um, uh, you know, get that information by checking out the IACAC website, IACAC.org. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Have a good evening. Have a good one. Have a good one.